messages on screen to the other the special navigation becomes available. This station will now see the Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast, the only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. We are your hosts, Cameron and Kobe. We are ready to bring survival goodness direct to your ear holes. This is direct survivalness. We're What's back up? to the old, yeah, the old dirty trusty. Yeah, it feels like an old pair of jeans getting in <laughs> right now, right? Yep. So, uh, yeah. What's, what's going, going on? on? You know, just stuff and things. <laughs> Thought I'd beat you to it. <laughs> what are we talking about today? Um, so, yeah, we, we haven't really gone very specific into bugging out. And so we thought... Mm-hmm. Why don't we go into specifics about bugging out? Man, we had a plan, didn't we? And that's it. We're that was our plan. We've been talking about it. For yeah. So we're, so yeah, yeah, we're talking about all aspects of bugging out, you know, like yeah. routes and locations. and Because uh, we've vehicles. hit hard a little more on definitely on bug out bag yeah. and then on vehicles mm-hmm. and then a location. This is kind of a little bit of... Uh, the whole shebang. Yeah. yeah. All of it together. Kind of just more things to think about and yeah. why you want to do it and what for and if it's good and if it's good and good. Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic discussion and I'm glad you're here to uh, listen to it. Yeah. Right? Uh, but first, guys, today's podcast is brought to you by our friends at Tac Pack, the only monthly tactical subscription box with useful professional grade stuff inside. Get 10% off your first Tac Pack with our code Casual Preppers at TacPack.com and join the thousands of satisfied subscribers today. You're going to get 10% off with our code at uh, Casual Preppers at TacPack.com. And we have a Tac Pack to talk about today. For sure. Interestingly enough. You are enough. not going to be sad if you own a gun. Yeah. It's like... It's the best. Anniversary for your gun every day. Mm. Every month. Every month. Listener reviews starts now. Listener reviews. I can read this. You want to do it? No, it's very short. It's perfect for you. (laughs) Perfect for you. You know what? I don't want to read it now. (laughs) Okay, I'll read it. Uh, This is a five-star review, and and the title says, Great Podcast. This is from Redman12345 on Apple Podcasts. Okay? (laughs) That looks like something that... Oh, that they, they type their password <laughs> into know. the username. Oh, oh dang it. Oh, well, I'll just, uh, it. I'll just let it go. Uh, Redman says, uh, these guys are informative and entertain- entertaining. <clears throat> I can't speak. Oh, yeah. They have a hard time <laughs> speaking. Uh, if you do not like this podcast, don't bother preparing. We do not need your negativity after the apocalypse. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> yeah. You'd, I'd give you a high five. I totally would. So if you guys want to be a part of this portion of the podcast, go to iTunes, go to Facebook, go to the Kindle book on Amazon, leave us a five-star review, but make it awesome. It's a mad, mad world. You know, just for all you haters out there, mm-hmm. I thought I'd just put this out there. You sure. Know. Go ahead. Negative feedback, fine. <laughs> you know, we're not getting paid to do this. We're doing it to help people. Yeah. And if it ain't helping you, screw you. Yeah, don't listen. Mm-hmm. That's fine. The we, end. We know that these voices can get annoying. Yeah. Just ask our wives. <laughs> See what they say about it. This is the only chance for Kobe <laughs> and I to do it without being directly judged. Yeah. And made fun of. But we do get judged and made fun of constantly. We still do. So that's fine. And I bet you that those are just aliases of our wives. Yeah. <laughs> all the negative reviews. <laughs> They're not on Instagram and Pinterest all night. They're negative reviewing this us. This is <laughs> Ton Drowny. 441. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, just make what? This kind of sounds like my wife's name. And you're bad in bed. What? How does this guy know that? <laughs> the hell? And you need to sweep the floor. <laughs> yeah. They're getting very specific into my life right now. And this I don't is like super it. weird. How yeah. did they know that? <laughs> Mad Mad World, Cameron. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but there were some tornadoes this last week. I they heard, were bad ones, but man. I didn't see much about it. They were bad ones. Uh, so tornadoes. Are tornadoes ever good ones? Well, I don't know. <laughs> if there's some down, of those places don't really need to be on Earth. Just out in the field. <laughs> it's just rabbits and stuff like that. That's not a big deal. They're cool to look at, right? That's true. So, I love looking at them. <laughs> I do, too. Uh, tornadoes tore through the southeastern U.S. over the weekend, killing more than 20 people so far, um, though the death toll may rise as rescue workers comb through rubble, cutting a path more than a mile wide and 24 miles long. Tornado was the deadliest in the U.S. in six years. Uh, back in Alabama, rescue efforts are continuing, but the storm system brought freezing temperatures in its wake, and some 8,000 people are without power. Wow, that's a lot. Movie people, and they don't, they don't have power. Power, 
I love it's power. critical. It's critical <laughs> if you if you need the lights on. There's or, a lot of things about me, but I love power. Yeah, I, everybody knows that about you. If you know Cameron, you know he just loves power. <laughs> I love electricity, <laughs> yeah. power, lights, all that kind of stuff. Uh, That's the worst thing, man. It really is the aftermath. Yeah, it's like how and, long is this going to take? Yeah, and so you know, just a reminder: if you if you live in Tornado Alley and any of those places, be careful. Yeah. You know what I mean? Heck, we don't even live in tornado alley. They hit sometimes. Yeah, so uh, it, it, tornadoes are real. They're not fake movie things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These are things that actually happen. So you need to be aware of it. <laughs> well, oh, I thought that just in a movie. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. It really does cause that cyclone thing? <laughs> that seems like a Hollywood fabrication to me, but... The things they can do in Hollywood these days. <laughs> no. Anyways. Computers and everything. Yeah, it's a bad deal. Yeah, no, it's always good to root. To be reminded of the uh, natural disasters. It, it is, yeah. Um, so, Russia sometimes can cause a mad, mad world. I think we ought to just call this the Russia segment. <laughs> Seriously. Because I don't know if we've gone through Almost one. always, I'm like, <laughs> Russia. Russia is crazy. Yeah. So, um, Russia has new for 2019 a hypersonic nuke. New 2019 hypersonic <laughs> nuke. <laughs> Come get yours today. Yeah. Um, Avangard is the name. Launches Avangard. atop a rocket before separating and gliding, gliding towards its target at an altitude just below the upper limit of the atmosphere and a velocity 20 times the speed of sound or faster. Whoa. Um, this U, the U.S. missile defense system um, can target a vehicle moving as fast, of, as fast at such a relatively low altitude for a strategic weapon, but some otherwise... Mm think otherwise that this is a problem because it's, it's just too fast yeah so anyway <clears throat> on top of that just recently they found that russia its uh, strategy for where to nuke was yeah. um you know revealed you know they were like didn't they put it like on the news yeah. or something yeah <laughs> it's like kids network <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> russian kids network <laughs> this just in <laughs> from rkn this is where we will nuke United States. Back to what is the messages. Do your worksheets. Get it in by Monday. <laughs> but they had like, man, they were aiming at bunkers. Like yeah. the um, Raven Rock. Raven Rock was one. Was it? Oh. And then a couple of forts, and then obviously DC. And mm-hmm. but yeah, they. I'm like, good job. I guess that. Well, yeah, but confident you know, enough, you, or they're trying to throw you off. Yeah, you know that most countries have those hit lists. Like, yeah, that. why wouldn't you? But Russia's you know, just like. like Let's Ooh. shoot it at Durango, Colorado. <laughs> Durango, it's like, Colorado. why? If you live in Durango, I'm sorry that he. I don't know. Let's just spread them out. I don't know where we're gonna hit. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah, the Russians. So, anyways, Russia's got some advanced weapons, and mm-hmm. we we've known that for a long time. Mm-hmm. But you know, they definitely always have the United States. They got the plane board out all the time. They do. They're like, well, hit here, here, here. And we got fast mm-hmm. missiles. Vladimir's just got like a big risk board yeah. in his office. <laughs> if we move this uh, missile this way, uh, we'll be able to attack on this side. How fast <laughs> could we strike here? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah good stuff. Russia mm-hmm. likes to make the world mad. Yeah, they do. Cameron, today we are talking about bugging out in all aspects of bugging out, not just bags, not just vehicles, not no, just, just routes, bugging out. locations. Yeah. We're talking about the whole shebang of bugging out. Right. So uh, let's just get going. Let's okay, start. Let's, let's get talk to about it. it. Let's get to it. Yeah. So one the the main thing about bugging out is the biggest thing is being prepared to respond at any time. Yeah. You know that's like the main plan of why you do it and mm-hmm. why you want to get ready. A lot of people, um, their plan A is just bug out. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm getting out no matter what. Yeah. I'm and sleeping. you know, we want to go into details of you know why they might think that way and and why that is a good plan, but also. The complications that could come up with yeah. it and, and why it's not always the best plan, depending on your situation. And it has a lot to do with that, too. Yes. Where do you live? And, and is it better to stay, you know, in your house um, or a location real close by? So we kind of want to break that down and tell you guys. Yeah. So if you've been debating for years and years, do mm-hmm. I bug in or do I bug out? We're going to really probably push you one way or another today yeah we hope so well we hope to push you in a certain direction yeah so yeah. the big thing um to begin with is is like that scenario like yeah why why are you why are you even thinking about bugging out or bugging in what's going on huh what's going on something's happening yeah so um number one event probably one of the most common things is you know a weather event you know tornadoes hurricanes mm-hmm. uh, earthquakes obviously some you can see coming some you can't but 
like we talked about recently is like hurricanes. Like, yeah, you got plenty of time to think about that one. You do. Yeah. And then, yeah, you've got a lot of valuables and um, maybe you got a, a beachfront property mm-hmm. in Arizona, like John Denver says. Or not John, <laughs> um, George Strait. <laughs> Strait. <laughs> um, John Denver make no sense. No. Um, so I, I'm sure it's hard to leave, but you've got time to leave. And that is a perfect mm-hmm. scenario that you're just like, you got to get out of there. It's time to bug out. Like, get out. Yeah. You know, if your house is saved, awesome. If it doesn't and you're in it, well, you're exactly, stupid. Exactly, yeah. Um, and there's even specific shelters for these types of things. You know, tornado shelters. They have mm-hmm. ones that you can bury, even ones above ground. And so, anyway, the event of uh, a weather event has both ways. You know, it may be better yeah. to stay at home um, or you need to get out of there. Or sometimes you don't know. I mean, a tornado, you can only have a couple of minutes of warning. Yeah. You don't have enough time to bug out. Right. So you, so you have to be ready for each of those, right? Yeah. Uh, a blizzard, I, I don't know. It just depends. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? I'm it, getting out of here. I, <laughs> there's snowing, damn it. I'm leaving. <laughs> but, yeah, you, yeah. the uh, having, having the plan to bug out is important. And yeah. even if you're, that's not your number one plan, mm-hmm. you got to be prepared for that. Um, another, a big one that would probably cause you to really have to think is the pandemic. Oh you my know, gosh. it's like, yeah, you stay at home, you might be safe there, yeah. but if your community is like just, you know, super infested with Ebola, mm-hmm. you, w- you probably want to get out of that community. Yeah. You probably want to get can. out and on the way out, you know, you're, you're exposing yourself. So yep. this is a tricky one, but, um, you just got to think ahead. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're not going to give you the. We're not going to answer your question. You got to <laughs> no. think about this. One. Yeah. Another thing's like government collapse. Um, so the enforcement of martial law and things like that. It may be good to stay at home, and they're going to force you to stay at home mm-hmm. too. Um, and that might be the safest place, and and that's good in a way. But at the same time, you may give up everything that you've been storing. And yeah, you know, we've talked about that in martial law. It's like you just hand over all your weapons and your food, and they're going to distribute go. it out. That yeah. would suck. But you know. But again, if you're you could, bugging out, it's hard to take all that stuff you with yeah, you anyways. Yeah. So it's it's a determination per you know situation type yeah, thing yeah. that you have to make. And we'll, yeah, and we'll talk a little more about too. You know, of those things about bugging out, having that location, even if you aren't planning to go there yeah, for yeah. that. So, um, natural disaster. I guess I kind of touched on that mm-hmm. too already. Uh, war. So what is it good for? It's unlikely that we're uh, absolutely nothing. <laughs> 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 absolutely nothing. Um, civil war, that might happen, huh? It absolutely Sometimes <laughs> I think... It feels I'm like, like we're headed I feel there like sometimes. all these threats, North Korea, Russia, I'm like, we're probably just going to have a civil war, yeah. honestly. Um, that would be a huge mess. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. would you stay at home? And um, you could be... I've read those stories, you know, in, in the civil war, it's like those plantation stuff are like, boom, right in, yeah. smack in the middle of, of the war. And it's like, you probably should have bugged out. Yeah. Or, you know, you take your side. Um but a nuclear strike, obviously, we've talked about staying in. If you have that facility local, you want to get to something as quick as possible mm-hmm. and get away from that yeah. nuclear fallout and things like that. Um, grid down. So power out, uh, whatever it is, EMP. You got to deal with riots. You may be in a small town. And it's probably safer just to stay there. But even when those things happen, you have such a short window you do. to like get away mm-hmm. before you get stuck. And that's and why then you're in between both locations. Yeah, and that's so. why it's critical to have the plan beforehand. Exactly. Because if you don't, that you're going to be caught. Yeah, you in can't that be like oh, in between. Should we stay, honey? Yeah. Or should, should I stay or should I here? go? <laughs> Stop. There's trouble if I stay. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like 10 Just like the song, song. references. <laughs> no. Um, but if yeah. I stay, there will be trouble. If I go, there will be double. <laughs> so I don't know. But yeah, you got to think about that because if yeah. you delay it in, in most of these. Mm-hmm. Just the slightest bit. And Kobe will talk a little more about that, the complications that you're going to run into if you don't try and get out and have that plan set and you're on your way. Yeah, a couple other things I kind of wrote. You actually went over most of this, but if you're out of resources, say you've bugged in your home, it's been a while, you didn't prep like really awesomely. And so, you know, you're out of resources. You don't have anything or you didn't prep at all, but you tried to bug in. Um, and there's another place that you could go that may have resources. That might be a reason for you to bug out. True. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's, a good one. that's a situation. Another one is chemical spills or nuclear meltdown. Oh, yeah, you like kind a of, plant, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you kind of talked about yeah, that. Yeah, it's a good one. And then the last thing is, and you went over this a little bit, Yeah, too. there's those weird chemical spills, huh, that happen like on a freeway or a train. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's like the whole town has to get out. Yeah, you but you want to be ready, right? And grow another eyeball. <laughs> exactly. Finger. 
Um, and the last one is basically if you live in a large population area, um, yeah, that's a huge it might just be better for you in most situations to bug out if there's any sort of um, possibility of a problem, yeah. right? You might just say, I'm going to get out and be safe. And yeah. then if I, if I bugged out prematurely, I can always come back. You know what I mean? And so. that's tough if you live in those highly populated it areas. It is, man. It's really tough. One, if you're living in it, and two, if you're working in it, it's like, yeah. freak, I'm screwed. Either. Everything's I'm harder. Really yeah. hard to get out. So there, there are some people who may have some issues where they actually can't bug out, and that's just something to be aware of. If you or anybody in your group or family has any of these issues, you're going to have to plan for it and just be ready for it. So anybody with a physical disability could make it difficult to bug out in, in certain situations, right? It all depends. I mean, if you have a vehicle and you can just get in and drive away, you'd probably be all right. But uh, women who are pregnant, you probably don't want them hiking with a bug out bag, you know, through the forest in the snow. It's just not a good idea. Yeah. And then older people, they're they're useless. So you don't want them to go anywhere. <laughs> right. You know, but if you get you get too old, you just But then can't. what was that that mm-hmm. recent that really big flood, remember in um, Texas? Uh And that nursing care center had, like, all those people trapped, the old people. Exactly. they got abandoned. Yeah. (laughs) Not good. Anyway, you got to think about that. Yeah. They tried to bug in, and it didn't work. So those are just a few things to think about. Um, Yeah, you definitely have to consider. Yeah, when when you're thinking about your bug out plan. So let's talk about uh, some pros and cons of bugging out. Uh, What's the good aspects of it? What's the bad? So let's start with the cons. The number one thing that I always think of is you're leaving 90% of your preps. You're just leaving them There's at home. There's absolutely no way to take all. Yeah. In, in even, I guess it depends on if, if you're somebody who has stocked a bug out location with just amazing stuff. More power to you. That's Maybe fantastic. Maybe you're storing everything in pods. Yeah, exactly. You Calm don't them up, tell them to move it out to your yeah. bug out location. But that uh, becomes an issue if you're bugging out. You're just you're going to leave preps. There's yeah. just no way around it, right? Um, you're leaving your secure home. That's a big one too. You know, your home is the most secure place that you have usually. Yeah. Um, and you've got four walls. You've got locking doors. You, you you know the location. You know where all your stuff is. Your family knows the location. You most likely know all your neighbors. So you're leaving most. that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Most likely. <laughs> but it's so much more comfortable for your it family. Is. Your kids aren't going to freak out. You exactly. Know, if, if all hell's breaking loose outside yeah. or in town. Mm-hmm. Your kids are like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're, they're just. Wish I have them watch movies. Yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead. But you're at home. You, it's the most safe place. It's the most comfortable place for you and your family. Uh, bugging out is most likely going to burn a ton of calories, depending on what it, what your bug out situation looks like. Travel is very dangerous usually in these situations. The roads are going to be clogged. The roads are going to be a mess. There's going to be people out there freaking out because people are dumb. And you have a bigger chance of being injured if, if you're bugging yeah. out. A uh, bigger chance of being caught in some sort of a riot, kind of like you talked about, you know. So those... Sucks you've already got limited supplies. Yeah. And it costs more to exactly. travel to the location. Yeah, so, so yeah. you're going to burn gonna... more supplies. You're not just kind of hanging out at home. Uh, so that's, you know, it's very physically demanding, especially if you need to bug out on foot, which could be a possibility depending on what your situation is. Um, Remember when we went down to those caves with our bug out bags? I do. Yeah, uh, it wasn't fun. I burned up an artery or two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bad deal. Um, <clears throat> like I said, it's you're always going to encounter more danger outside of your home. Well, not always, but most always. of um, always. <laughs> Cam says <laughs> most of the time you're going to encounter more but danger. Yeah, it's, yeah. You're like I it's said, mad mad world. Out it's there. a mad mad world. Um, you're limiting your resources to what you can carry or fit in a vehicle or on your body. You're just you're limiting yourself. Yeah. Again. That that's depending on what you've stocked at your bug out location, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, resources like food, and food, fuel, and food, <laughs> feud, feud. You don't want any feud. You don't. You can run out unless you have a restocking plan. You know, pretty easily. Um, <clears throat> you're not going to have any established defensive structures on your way to your location. Well, I most likely not. You could, but you're not like at home with all your ammo and with all your guns and and. Readily Maybe you have a turret back. Exactly. You got <laughs> it's got it's scanning the whole time. Exactly. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Um you're 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 leaving your home suit. Actually, you can't defend it. Yeah. Right? So if there are, you know, riots or if there's looters, uh there's nothing you can do. They're just gonna get in and take and destroy. All right. Uh your bug out vehicle could break down. And that would cause another dangerous situation, yeah. uh, a broke down vehicle and people see opportunities and that could be bad. And the last one is 
most likely most a bunch of other people are going to be trying to leave too because yeah. they didn't prep. Right. <clears throat> and when you get out with a bunch of other people who are trying to go to the same place or that have ran, no plan, that have no plan. What a nightmare. It's a freaking joke, dude. You're not going to want to be a part of that. Yeah. It's, you know, the, when you, when you think about survival and bug out and like bugging out is probably the coolest thing to think about, you know, it it's is, like, yeah. it's like bugging in is dumb. Yeah. You know, it's like, I stay home every day. It's one of those less attractive things. Yeah. It's not as su- sexy as bugging it, out. It really isn't. Yeah. And, um, so bugging out sounds amazing, but you know, after you look at those cons, yeah. I'm already stressed out. It's, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to burn my bug out bag tonight. Exactly. No use in it. I say all these things, but sometimes there's nothing you can do. You have to bug out. So exactly. that's why it's still important yeah, you have to prep have to for, it, for it. Right. So let's talk about some of the, uh, the pros of bugging out. There's a lot smaller list It is. The, the list is slightly smaller, but that's okay. Um, well, I don't know. But even, they're big deals. Yeah, they are big deals. Sometimes you have to. That's a pro, I think. Exactly. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. You yeah. have to bug out. Yeah. So, so no matter what decision it's you the make, better you plan. have to have both plans. Yeah, it's a better plan. Um, you may be better off away from a situation at your home base. So if there's, you know, a tornado, Obviously, bugging out's a good deal. Yeah. Go do it. Yeah, you're not going to get sucked into a cyclone and there throw it across. There it is. I'm going this <laughs> exactly. way. Exactly. Very simple situation to understand. If a hurricane's coming, very simple. Um, sometimes, whatever's going on at your house, you can't be there because of that situation. So, it's a pro to leave. Like your wife has friends over. Yeah, you want to leave immediately. <laughs> Make that decision before <laughs> it happens. You do not want to come home or go through that yeah. conversation. It's a bad deal because you might get caught in the crossfire and you don't know what's going to happen. So it's probably a good idea to have your bug out bag in your garage or something. Yeah, so I just wear mine it. all the time. I just wear mine all day. <laughs> <laughs> I just took it off to, to do the podcast. All right, let's check your prostate. What's that big old bag on there? Just turn around. <laughs> just in case, dummy. Um, <laughs> my medical supplies in here. So, so <laughs> bugging out. Uh, you can keep moving if you have to. That you can be actually be very flexible when you're bugging out. When when you're at home, you can do cartwheels. Yeah, yoga, <laughs> yoga. Um, when when you're bugging out, or like opposed to bugging in, when you're bugging in, you're just there. You're yeah. at your house. In That's where you track, stay. Yeah. But if you're bugging out, you can really easily change plans. You can change routes. You can change where you're staying tonight. You can change a lot of things very yeah. easily. So that's you can be really flexible. It's very good. Uh, you can leave the masses of idiots. Because and that's healthy, too, like being flexible, like you said. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, being out away from the trap. Yeah, like Absolutely. Kids, yeah. if, if you stay at home with them for a couple of days straight. Yeah, it's an, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you can leave uh, large groups of people if you have to. Mm-hmm. And, and if you live in a, a big masses city. Of yeah, the masses of idiots. If you live in a city um, and, and there's an SHTF situation, you don't want to be around all those people. You know what I mean? Leave just, the MI. It, what? <laughs> masses of idiots. Yeah. <laughs> LMI. Leave mass of idiots. <laughs> Remember that acronym, LMI. Oh, LMI. <laughs> um, Honey, you, LMI. LMI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, you're not going to be a target for looters if you're constantly moving away from people. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just you're like joking. dodging me. You, you can't loot me. You can't get us back. Uh, Boom. Oh, you're yeah. gone. You're going to be gone. You know, it's, it's really easy to avoid those people. And those looters <laughs> are usually bad people, right? So uh, All of them. Not every, yes. 99.9%. Scavengers are good people. Yeah, there's a very big looters difference. Looters are bad people. Do we need to go over this again? Because we've gone over this many times. <laughs> <laughs> They're different things. So you're not going to have to worry about looters because you're not in a place where there's going to be looters, right? right? Um, hiding is an easier thing, right? It is. Because <laughs> you can hide wherever you want. If you're in your house, you can only hide in your house. I just sit down, boom, I'm hidden. hidden. <laughs> there's a bush. That's where I'm hiding, right? So um, those are my pros. You need gilly. Yeah, um, those are my pros. So that it, it's, no, it's uh, good, yeah. You know, those, those are some of the good reasons for getting out of Dodge. Those are some great reasons. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to get out of Dodge, you need to have a plan. Yeah. You need to have a route you're going to take. You need to have an alternate route you're going to take and a, probably a third alternate route that you're going to take. And where are you going? So as free and hippie as you want to be, mm-hmm. you really need to be heading somewhere. Exactly. You're, it's, it's probably you're not a good idea. wasting energy. It's not a good idea to just bug out and just say, we're going to start walking. <laughs> We're see gonna what be happens. Nomad bug out. We're just gonna see what happens, right? <laughs> yeah. Probably not the best idea, no. <laughs> dear. We're just gonna leave, honey. We're, where are we going? We're just getting out. We're just going. All well, right. 
like here in Vernal. Imagine bugging out of town. It's like, <laughs> gosh, just nothing forever. Yeah. Well, we got a plan to just get in the way. Yeah. Uh, so let, let's talk about uh, your route for one thing. Um, here's a few tips when you're talking about your bug out route. All right. <laughs> you got quiet. Like I, I, got, I got serious. This is what I'm, <laughs> this is a very serious conversation. Right, now. Major highways and roads are probably not the best choices when you're when when you're choosing your bug out route because sure. um, they're going to be really crowded because that's what it, the roads that everybody takes and when it's there's usually speed limits yeah it's stupid stuff it's like usually that. the fastest route to most places and there's going to be a lot of people and they, they could yeah, also highways be, are the fastest route to death <laughs> and <are>. injury <laughs> yeah. in yeah. this scenario those signs should say death not Cheyenne 150 <laughs> miles death now you're dying dying at one point in between yeah. here and Cheyenne yeah. Um, so yeah, be careful of major highways in, you know, freeways and all those types of things. They could be a bad deal in an SHTF situation. Uh, if you're driving again, use back roads, less traveled roads as much as you possibly can. That should seem obvious, but just think about that as you're doing it. Avoid traffic lights. Um, if you're in a city, this might be really hard, but if your route includes traffic lights, have you ever been to a, a, a traffic light that was blinking red? Yeah. Have, have you ever? Everybody loses their. You minds. ever been excited about it? <laughs> no. I sure as hell know. That I just shut the car off yeah, and just start walking. I did, yeah, it's, the best thing to do is pull off to the side of the road and walk. It's through amazing it. how like yeah. four way stops and even worse is when you do have a flashing red. Oh it's like, my god! That mean we all go or <laughs> yeah. and it's usually. Like, is there an accident? One person will go, and then like nine thousand people behind them will go because yeah. you can't do anything. What yeah. do you do, right? <laughs> I know. And then you just have to wait until there's a break, and then somebody else can go. It's yeah. it's a ridiculous like, situation. Wah, 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 it's to where you're all about touching. It's front the bumpers. worst of the worst of civilization. A blinking four way red light. So true. It's the worst. It's the true. Avoid it. A blinking yellow light. Oh yeah. Is almost as if it never existed. Oh yeah. That does, that's not even there. It's yeah. invisible. It's, it's pointless to even hang it yeah. and waste that electricity. Yeah, it's just pointless. We need to talk to somebody about that because that's a ridiculous <laughs> thing. There's a distraction right there. <laughs> just blow through it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So if if you're on, uh, if your route has a, a traffic light, try and change your route if you can. If it's possible. Sometimes you can't. I understand. But if you can't, don't have one in there. Don't rely on GPS. Okay, yeah, Cameron, seriously. that's a bad idea. I you agree. just say, well, I got my coordinates on my GPS, and when I'm ready, I'm just going to go to those coordinates. Right. That might be worth dick once stuff goes down. You know, Maybe the Russians hacked it. Yeah, yeah. They have hacked your GPS, and you're going to end up in a canal dead. Tim Apple probably totally. Tim did Apple? See that? I did see something about <laughs> that. said Tim Apple. <laughs> Tim Apple. I did I see love that. that investment from Tim Apple. Tim Apple. Yeah. Um, the next thing is uh, physical maps of your state and the surrounding states are probably a really good idea because, again, you might not have internet access to roads. And if you get to a point where you don't know where you're at, you can pull them maps out and then you know where you're at. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then if you don't ever use them, you can wipe your butt with them. Absolutely. Or start a fire. Or start a fire. Or both. <laughs> Literally, paper is the most useful thing. <laughs> it really is. Very good idea. Again, trail maps, topographical maps, all very good to have. Uh, so you can see trail maps, <laughs> and you can see the topography of the of the land where you're going. <laughs> yeah. Should we hike over this? Yeah. It has like seven different little ripples on it. Yeah. What does that mean? That's weird. Let's go check it out. Let's go see if Let's it's go see up or down. Is. Yeah. Um, does your route have access to water? That's very important, Cameron. Yeah. Very, very important. Because water... Building blocks of life, really, when you come down to it, <laughs> right? So you need to have that. <laughs> it's true. It is true. Um, a good thing to think about on your route is know the major landmarks along the way and the distances between them because, you know, you know that uh, the Seven Eleven's here and you know that it's five miles to the burnt tree on a road or whatever, right? So you can have some... From here to Salt Lake, mm -hmm. I know exactly where every rest stop is. Do you? To a T. They're right on the side of the road. Everybody knows where they're at. No, but I know how long it takes to get to each oh, and every you? one of them. Oh, okay. That's good. That's fantastic. That's My good. children have taught me this. Yeah, they have, huh? Yeah. Uh, so that's just something to think about. Um, and it might be good to know the closest stores or restaurants along the way or it's something that's close and that doesn't even have to be along the way. So if something happens, you can resupply at one of those things if you need to as a scavenger, not a looter. Exactly. Or if they might be open, you can grab what you need, right? Mm-hmm. So thinking about some alternate routes um, that might not be just roads, here's some things to think about. Here's some food for thought, Cameron. Um, <laughs> railroads. Railroads are a fantastic way to get out of town if you yeah, got a railroad, are. right? They're usually built on level ground because trains don't like to do this. 
<laughs> so it's easy to drive. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny, but it's true. Trains it don't do this. True. Yeah. Um, never thought about that. Yeah. So they usually. It's get, not a roller coaster road. <laughs> it's a railroad. It's a roller coaster. If you want the yeah, an easy path. It's true. I wonder how much it is to install the. Like, I'm pretty sure it's illegal, but you know the little things that pop down, and uh-huh. then you can just use your truck on the railway. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting that on my bucket. Or one of those that you have to pump the thing and you just go down. <laughs> Get one of those. That would be sweet. It would be. Just have it hidden in the bushes. And then yeah. I bet you those weigh a ton. But They'd probably have do. your family hurry and get it on there. Let's go into town. <laughs> Let's go. Exactly. It's not a bad idea. So railroads usually connect major cities. So if you need to get from city to city, r- r- go on the railroad. <laughs> <laughs> they are connected. Okay, they're connected. Um, a lot they, of the times those are like so far away from the road yeah. that they follow like rivers and exactly. stuff. So that's it's probably a, good idea. a better yeah. route. And speaking of rivers, Cameron, I'm glad you brought that up. Good segue. Um, they usually have bridges over those. Mm-hmm. So you know you can get over those without having to swim or caulk your wagon Haven't and you float across. Haven't you ever seen Stand By Me? I have. It's totally bridge and yeah. river. Uh-huh. And there's a body by it. Um, You'll probably find bodies, too, if you yeah. walk along the road. The last thing about railroads, though, just make sure you don't get run over by a train. Right. Because those might still be rolling. Or somebody might have an apocalyptic bug-out train. We talked about that before. <laughs> that would be amazing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think we talked about that before. About having like stop for nothing. 50 train cars of sweet. water. You could. You just blast through town. Yeah. Put a car on the way. Don't yeah. matter. Don't matter. I'm going. So, anyways, railroads. One thing to think about. Uh, the next thing is good food m- major power line paths. So usually if there's a big power line, they've cut swaths of, <laughs> yeah, you want to like Mission just, Impossible over those things. like monkey bars. Yeah. Uh, I don't usually travel by power lines. No, typically with the power lines, they have a very wide straight path that they've cut, you know, and so they're easy to walk along, but yeah. they're easily to get to cover if you need to. Yeah. So just something to think about. Could be lookout points too if you want to go up and get electrocuted. Exactly. But maybe the power's down. Who knows? Yeah, you don't know. The last one I'm, I don't do that. I want you to think about <laughs> is waterways. Um, in water, water world, waterways. Depending on where you live, a boat can get you out of Dodge pretty damn fast. For sure. Right. So if and you're, you're isolated by water, exactly. So you know if <laughs> I would love to have a yacht, a bug yeah, out yacht. Absolutely, man. Piece Why not? Great. So obviously it's best if you have a river or a very big lake next to you. Because yeah. if you don't, then that's not really the best option. Um, but it could just be a quick leg of your bug out route, right? It might be a couple of miles I'm on the river, and then I ha- I know that I have this. Once I get to this point, and I get off and I do this type of thing, right? So just kind of think about that. Um, but you're gonna have to have a dependable boat or watercraft of some sort. Maybe it's a jet ski. I can't ski. afford that. No. Maybe it's a jet ski. I don't know. It could be something. Yeah. But just think about it. So let's talk about your bug out location. This is something we've talked about several times. So I'm actually going to go over this pretty quick. So when you're considering your bug out location, one of the things you need to think about is distance. Yeah. How far is it away from where you are most of the time, which is usually your home, or maybe it is your, your place of work, right? Your job. Um, I say, this is what I think, make sure it's within a gas tank's distance from your home. Yeah, that and way, that's more than enough. Yeah, that way, hopefully you have enough fuel at your house or something that you could fill up your tank and get to, get to your bug out location, right? Um, make sure that this place is... And don't be like, this is, I can get 333 miles. Yeah. I'm going to put my bug out location... 333 miles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not a good idea. <laughs> Um, make sure you're a sufficient distance away from large population centers. Again, people are the worst. You don't want to be near them in this situation. And then, again, like we've talked about, have several routes um, to get there. Uh, another big one for your bug out location is water. Uh, does your bug out location have running water? If it does, man, you're the, you're the man, and I want to shake your hand. Uh, but if not, you know, because you look, municipal water supplies can be poisoned or compromised in an ASHTF situation. So that you don't want to rely on it if, yeah. you, if you don't it's have gonna to. It's going to be like... Those are going to be like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. You're going to have people dipping their hands exactly. in it. Exactly. <laughs> kids falling in Fat it. Getting kids sucked falling. Up. Yeah, it's a bad deal. So think about that. Um, you know, when the city workers decide it's no longer worth coming in, then that water becomes compromised sooner or yep. later. You don't know what's going to happen. But here's they just a, kick all the rest of the chlorine into it. <laughs> yeah. hey, oh, everybody, let's get out of you're here. You're good for two months. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just pure chlorine. This tastes like a pool. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, but it kills everything. It does. Um, so here's a few perfect scenarios for water. 
Maybe you have a private well. That's a fantastic thing that to have. That would be amazing. Maybe you have fresh water spring on your property. Ooh, even better. Good gracious. Maybe you have a river or, or a river-fed pond or lake. That's good. Beautiful. Maybe you have a rain catchment system. Mm, I hope Smart it, pants. hope it rains. <laughs> So the best thing is actually a combination of all or of several of those is probably your best option. A right. private rain catchment, river fed, fresh water spring pond. Oh man, I just combined it all. I just got a little bit <laughs> excited when you said that. <laughs> um, and the next thing is food and, and renewable resources. You know, can you grow food there if you if you're stuck there for seasons upon seasons? Yeah. Uh, do you have renewable energy sources like wood? Because woods Wood in your, yeah, you have good sunlight if you need it for you know whatever. Uh, can you raise animals? You like a hamster farm of some sort? <laughs> Tactical geese, goats, any of those things you need to have. Is there wild game that you can hunt right. or attempt to hunt? Um, and do you have year-round access? That one can be critical. Like a membership what, to your own location. Do you have a swipe card to get in. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. No, you know, if if it's, if it's in uh, the winter and it's like five feet of snow, it's probably yeah. not going to so- yeah. be something you can do, right? True, true. Uh, security is another one. This can be, uh, you know, on your route or at your bug out location. Obviously, in your bug out bag in your bug out vehicle, make sure you have some sort of self defense weapons. That's going to be key especially in this situation. Um, you're, you're probably going to be fending off unwanted groups, wanderers, all those types of things. Uh, do you have a good field of view from your bug out location? Yeah. You know, are you on high ground? Maybe you're up against a large cliff face. You're only looking at three different directions. You know, you don't have to look at this last direction. Something to think about. I like that. I do too. Uh, location-based threats. This is something a lot of people overlook. You don't want to though. <clears throat> it's bad to, to overlook it. Are you in a flood zone? You know, if you get a big rain, or is your bug out location going to become right a bug out river valley? Yeah, it's not good. Is it prone to very cold winters or large amounts of snow? Both of those things can be very tough when you're bugging out. Does it have a history of droughts? Mm-hmm. Because water is important. Mm-hmm. Tornadoes, hurricanes, fires, bears, mountain lions, or Sasquatch. All those things are hard when you're bugging out. Sasquatch is freaking jerks. I know. Especially in they're a bug so, out situation. They're so territorial. I hate them. And, they, and they'll take advantage of a situation like that. Yeah. They, they always will. do. Um, Again, away from large population Maybe centers. Maybe they were just people that bugged out long ago <laughs> yeah. and just turned into Sasquatch. Yeah, so that's that's kind of um, location for me. That's yeah, what I've got, yeah. Cameron. You know, we talked about in the uh, episode 59 mm-hmm. the details of the location. Sure. So a lot of that was from episode 59. Take a minute 59. right now. Actually, we're going to play it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> play the whole episode podcast. Episode like Inception here. <laughs> yeah. Episode within an podcast episode. Podcast within a podcast. Yeah. Um, but some locations that we'd mentioned in that, I just wanted to go over real quick. Yeah. A cabin, you know, it's great. It's usually stocked already. It's been proven to, to withstand nature and yeah. all the other crap there. And it's fun. Kids love cabins. Cabins are the best. A fire watch tower would be great. Oh man. I've thought about that several times. I have too. You got the perfect view of everything mm-hmm. and it's up off the ground. You know, you're safe from animals and Sasquatch and mm-hmm. things like that. You just got to guard your stairwell. But then again, you could get trapped. You but, could get trapped, yeah. But um, those are great. Um, ranch uh, got a long, you know, huge area. Like the dressing, like uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a tip. Two ranch jokes in two days. You had one last night. Did I? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. The Emerald Ranch. Oh yeah, dressing. that's right. <laughs> Playing we were, some Red Dead. We were now. playing Red Dead, which they <laughs> really messed up the online yeah. features. But Emerald Ranch. It's a delicious dressing. Mm. Love it on my salad. <laughs> Um, but a ranch is cool because you have this really large area, you mm-hmm. know, a huge perimeter, and most of the land's kind of been worked or ready, yeah. and then you've got tools and everything on that. So take over a ranch any chance you can get. Yeah. A cave or a mine, obviously, you only got one entrance, maybe. Yeah. Maybe there's a back entrance. Mm-hmm. But um, these have uh, great protection from rain and lightning and all kinds of scary features. <laughs> like, and- I'm just thinking about lightning. This is the best place to be in this. Let's get in that old abandoned mine. <laughs> Plus, you got a railway. We ain't got any clouds above Probably us. Probably goes to a water source. <laughs> um, so an open, just an open area out in the plains, you know. Sure. Um, Indians and pioneers did it for years. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> you can see stuff coming all times. Yeah. Um, a camper trailer's nice. Uh, one of those little. Survival trailers would be oh, yeah, so man. like my ideal setup, and I'll get to that is mm-hmm. like 
I would love like a four door Jeep mm-hmm. and a and a survival trailer. I mm-hmm. can stock both of them, and I have somewhere to sleep that's not in the truck itself. Yeah, and it can be left, and mm-hmm. you can go wherever. Like that would be I so like it. great. I like it. Um, so a trailer, you, you know, a lot of people leave them in uh, a camping spot and piss me off every year. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and so you could leave your trailer and go up to it. Yeah. Time. Um, a bunker obviously would be the ultimate. Yeah. Um, expensive, and especially if it's in a location other than close by home. Yeah. Like, that would take a lot of money and a lot of time. But if you can do it, holy do amazing. It. Yeah. Do it. Storage shed. That mm-hmm. won't get you very far, but <laughs> maybe protected from a few We're going to mention it, though. <laughs> a box car. Um, these <laughs> would be sweet, but it's rare that you're going to find one off the beaten path. Yeah, but what know? if it's connected to the train? That's even better. And it's going. Survival train. There's yeah. another. We should get it going. I know. Bug out train. Yeah. So weather, Kobe kind of talked uh, mostly about this. You mm-hmm. know, it's just to consider those locations. What are the extremes? You know, like here in uh, where we live, down on the valley, it could be like 70, 75. Mm-hmm. You go up to stay overnight, and it's like 18 or 15. Yeah. Like drastic. Frostbite. Crazy scary. You don't want it. So, you know, just consider those locations. And if you're going to end up staying there and how long, like, what are you going to run into eventually? Yeah. Winter's poopy up in the mountains. It is. Tough. But maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want to be away from people. And Exactly, yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, Snow a cave. People- <laughs> Yeah. It's a bug out location. <laughs> this is going to be gone in a couple of months. What igloo. are we do then? Yeah. Yeah. An igloo would be great. Uh-huh. Um, and then, yeah, traveling back and forth for supplies in the middle of the snow. Mm, yeah. Tough. You got to be thinking about that. Um, and then midsummer, you know, what are the risks there? Obviously, water is going to be a bigger problem. And then uh, just, yeah, it's just hard in the summer. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. I yeah. actually would rather deal with winter personally. The freaking I do. super yeah, hot I think so too. summer, I go crazy. Although being with my wife in the, the, in the winter, it would be bad. Yeah. She wouldn't be able to take it. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Either way, I think winter would scare more people off too. Probably, yeah, you're right. Anyway, um, and then we talked too about those resource runs. You need to make sure that maybe you have a, a safe, quick path that it's not going to cost a lot of energy and, a, mm-hmm. and, and be a huge risk. You know, if you have to only get into this place to to restock or scavenge, um, how safe is it getting in and out of there? Mm-hmm. Are you going to die in an avalanche if That's, you have to go in the winter? You don't want that. Um, and then what can be harvested in those areas? Uh, is it a, a good stream that has fish? Uh, is there a lot of wildlife that isn't going to be overhunted? Things like that you got to think about. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a berry bush Ooh. or wild turkeys. Ooh, wild turkeys. I like <laughs> or that. Or sheep. And you just <laughs> grab them all and bring them to your town center. <laughs> That's right. And cook them and eat them. I like it. Um, but yeah, you got to think about the risks of you and, and whoever's going out on that resource run and how mm-hmm. far and how costly it's going to be. So now let's talk about one of the sexiest things ever is mm. the bug out vehicle. It really is. And one of the things I know the least about. Yeah. A bug out vehicle. Sure. But, um, we're not experts in, um, vehicles. We're not mechanics. Mm-mm. We don't, you know, there's, we, this we don't is, claim to be, this is one of those areas that's like. Like the gun enthusiast yep. and then the uh, bug out vehicle. Or if you haven't realized, if you haven't noticed, Cam and I are a little reluctant to do a few episodes. One of them is like a straight up bug out vehicle like episode. All the yeah. The uh, one of them, another accessories one. And yeah. What kind of drive line? Another one is um, uh, firearms. Yeah. And because the hard part is, is there's a lot of people that are very, very well versed in those things. Very, very well. And I know exactly what's going to happen the minute we say something that's not yeah. 100% correct. Yeah. We're going to get inundated with emails and messages saying, you guys are the dumbest people I've ever heard in my life. Exactly. So we're just trying to avoid it as so much we're just, as we can. Yeah. So this is just kind of, you know, just a, a little quick, easy breakdown of yeah. bug out vehicles, some sure. things to consider. Mm-hmm. Um, so your bug out vehicle, you know, we don't know the four wheel drive, the locking drive. Johnson rods and <laughs> Johnson. Roncho suspension. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, some basics to consider with your bug out vehicle. You want one that has some good clearance. Yeah. Because no matter what, you you probably you're gonna have to go around a vehicle off the beaten path. Yeah. A little bit. Maybe you're not gonna climb a mountain with it, but you need to not get high centered yeah. on a helmet when you run a body over. Helmets. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. That's a little morbid. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, four wheel drive obviously would be preferable because mm-hmm. um, weather changes any minute. <laughs> yeah, so um, does the terrain. You do want to have a full spare tire, not mm-hmm. a donut or I got you a know, spare tire. <laughs> yeah, 
But a full spare tire yeah. is going to be much more useful if you blow it. If you blow it big time. You blew it, man. <laughs> and then you want to have a vehicle that has a good <clears throat> capacity that can, you know, seat your family, obviously. Yeah. Unless you don't want them to go with you. <laughs> There's two options. But, <laughs> but <laughs> you also want to be able to take enough food and supplies to get to your bug out location. Or you don't exactly know what, you know, what if you're on plan C and you mm-hmm. have to stay and live in your vehicle. Yeah. So good capacity. So those are some quick tips on there. Um, other things to consider is, is fuel type and economy. You know, diesel versus gas. Uh, how accessible those are. How far you can get on mm-hmm. a gas tank, or you know, those are things that are important. We talked more detail in in the bug out vehicle episode. Um, well, it was a transportation episode. Transportation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Commonality. So this one's a little tricky too, because one. I like I like the older older vehicles. Like I have a 1977 F-150. Parts Beautiful. are pretty abundant. Yeah. But at the same time, those old ones can be a little tricky to find the specific parts. Yeah. If you really want to be safe, go with like a 1995 F-150 yeah. or you know something that people are still driving today yeah. frequently. And There's trade offs, right? Exactly. I mean, because with yours, you know, it's most likely EMP proof. Ish. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And it's relatively easy to fix when there is something wrong. Yeah. No. And yeah. And that brings me to the other. Oh, point. Okay. Is, Sorry, is that yeah. new and old? No. That's good. Yeah. Um. The uh. Yeah. The EMP proof is a big thing too. It's like if you have all these computer systems in these newer ones, yeah. who knows how susceptible those are to an EMP? Yeah. There's um, a debate. Uh, you where know. they come from, countries that hate us, they probably are susceptible. Oh, yeah. And they plan that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Um, man, there's a conspiracy. Yeah, theory. stop, stop driving your Russian vehicles. <laughs> All right. What is a Russian? Vehicle? <laughs> I don't even know if there are one. <laughs> my Su, my Su. What is the What's the jet that they use? The, uh, oh, the MIG. Oh, the MIG. Yeah, the yeah. MIG broke down, but <laughs> MIG. Um. So obviously, the older vehicles that are more common and don't have all the electronics, they're easier to fix. Mm-hmm. The parts are a little easier to. Not always do they have to match too. They'll work. Yeah. You know, being from a different. You know, you get a Chevy part in a Ford. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. You just got to kick it a little bit and hey, it goes this, in. This day and age, you got to have that. Yeah. You know, there's no gotta defined be gender and type of. You got to be flexible. Yeah. So the other thing is safety. Um, you know, a lot of times you hear that the, what's the saying? It's like, they don't build them like they used to. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know? And maybe for reliability, but when it comes to safety features, you would think those big steel beasts like mm-hmm. the old trucks are better, but no, not actually. Not necessarily. The newer ones yeah. have a lot better safety features. So, you know, if somebody was to lose it and try and ram you, mm-hmm. you're probably going to end up a little better than in a yeah, absolutely. An older vehicle. So there's, yeah, definitely some trade-offs there. Um, the one thing too is uh, some accessories to add to your bug out vehicle. Actually, let me go back to the so the capacity we talked about accessories and um, if you want to just go all out, you could go with the aggressive approach and get a bulletproof vehicle mm. with murder holes and <laughs> murder holes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, we're just talking about like what's the most the basics logical yeah. thing and impossible thing for you to own that's mm-hmm. that's going to be easy to use. So, um, as for accessories, you want that full spare tire. You want some extra fuel. So carrying it in, you know, uh, a fuel tank like a ga- uh, a metal one or whatever mm-hmm. it's good to take some with you you never know um also to refuel off from abandoned vehicles and things like that yeah. or gas stations it'd be nice to have a siphon hose and that type of yeah. thing in there probably and then you can go out of control with lights yeah. i've seen people just yeah i mean they're a driving meteorite if you don't have purple <laughs> lights in the apocalypse <laughs> yeah. you're gonna look so stupid that's why one of my other favorite things bug out vehicles would be um like a case tractor because they have <laughs> yeah. so many lights on them. Yeah. And then you just pull. They look so cool It's at like night. tremors, you know. You yeah. just pull like a manure spreader and just stack all kinds of crap in there. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. I don't an know. awesome bug your, out vehicle. Your, uh, Those suckers. MPGs might not be the best. No. But no. But you. But if you fill that thing up. Yeah. It'll, it'll go, go for, for a long it. time. Yeah. yeah. So that would be a lovely one. I like that. Um, obviously, have a tool kit that'll, that'll fit the parts of your vehicle. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I guess... When I talk about commonality, I'm basically saying don't drive, you know, uh, like a a Shelby GT500. Yeah, like yeah. you're just not going to. It's not a good idea. Or a Volkswagen Touareg. I found out. Don't is, don't. It's just a rip don't off. do it. <laughs> and then um, ways to jump the battery. Yeah. 
having extra batteries probably one of the best things because you can jump off that plus mm-hmm. you can use it to power lights and whatever else and then Kobe and I love the uh, Gulu yeah jumper charger because it's a flashlight you can charge devices off from it and it jumps every time every time and it's like yeah and it you can takes jump like two several seconds. times it's crazy yeah you can jump like what three or four times yeah, on one yep, charge yep I think so it's pretty cool a jump lawnmower even yeah absolutely maybe that's your bug out view maybe other vehicles real quick um, animals. Sure. Maybe your horse. Maybe your. Mm-hmm. I mean, that'll get you probably farther. Than, and most of the time, than it probably anything. will. Anything you can go anywhere with a horse. Yeah, you don't have to worry about fueling it up. Just got to have some sagebrush or some grass. Yeah, you know what I mean. Exactly. Some water. So that would be a great one. Um, dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you're not riding them. Maybe they're pulling a sled. Or maybe they're just carrying some gear for you. Right. And we'll talk a little too quickly about like animals and pets. Those that are. Yeah. There's advantages and disadvantages. Those. A donkey. Hmm. Jesus did it <laughs> when he was in the you womb. You can put all kinds of crap up on those things. <laughs> you can. You really walk can. them along. Uh, tactical rope. They can carry mm-hmm. stuff. Um, some motorbikes. Those are, you know, you can get a lot of places with those, yeah. and they're easy to fix most of the time. Um, in and out of traffic, crap like that. Dune buggies. Those are just sweet. They look cool. Mad Max drove one. Yeah. Um, ORV. Bullet holes. <laughs> That's why I put that in there. <laughs> um, Side by side or mm-hmm. UTV, you know I hate yeah. them and they're loud. You'll hear them coming a mile away. Yeah, that annoying but be noise. Great. But they're really comfortable and yeah. they have beds and dumping beds and you can pull a trailer with them. Yeah, they're great. So they would work really well. And then the tractor and trailer, obviously, I think mm-hmm. that's a great one. Military vehicles, if you're lucky. Oh man, they have some amazing ones. They like do. We went to the prepper con. Those ones were. Just, oh yeah, there's some amazing stuff it's there, crazy. dude. And you know those suckers are made to go across the worst terrain. Ever. Oh yeah. Um, and they even have snorkels and everything already on them. Oh, they're so great. So sexy. A boat. We talked about we that. We did talk about that. Aircraft. Yeah. That'd yeah. be awesome. Man, if you, if you, uh, if, if you're, you had a, if you're a helicopter pilot, pilot, that's probably the best thing there. Yeah, man. Anyway. Okay. So yeah, there you go. That's very good. Hey, Cam, real quick. Yeah. Can I talk about Survival Guard? Oh yeah, do it. Survival Guard is the ultimate vitamin formula for emergency preparedness, survival, and life. You will have confidence in the knowledge you are getting 100% of all 13 essential vitamins and 8 essential minerals, 11 super antioxidants, healthy omega-3 fish oils, and a unique proprietary NutriPrep blend for physical and mental emergency preparedness. We are confident that you will experience a better overall sense of well-being, more energy with enhanced alertness, and increased ability to concentrate with greater endurance. And you will be best prepared physically and emotionally for whatever situations you face, no matter how extreme. Use coupon code CASUALPREPPERS, and you're going to get 20% off your order at SurvivaGuard.com. Now, that, that deal is hard to pass up. Yeah. I don't care who you are. How perfect is this for a bug out plan? Oh, man. They're going to last. Just throw a bottle in your yep. last 25 years. You don't ever have to even yeah. think about it. I, again, I don't know if it's 25 years, but I know they last a long time. It will last a long time, and you don't even have to worry about it. Exactly. So check I out have Survivor one. Um, I've been taking them. And yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I like them. They, yeah. they, they do feel good <laughs> you look better but you know i always have a hard time with other vitamins that yeah. give me kind of a stomach ache and these don't although i tried to take one mm-hmm. they're pretty big capsules yeah with just like a teeny bit of a water bottle I'm oh. Like, oh i don't have enough got stuck yeah I've, I've done that before burped up fish scales and yeah powder for, make sure you got plenty of water so anyways swam hole so guys moving on from bu- bug out vehicles uh something we've talked about a lot is bug out bags we're going to kind of gloss over it because we've talked about it so many times if you want to learn more about bug out bags we actually have two episodes on bug out bags um yeah, and so you can just go back in our um archives and look at those but um we wanted to quickly mention an inch bag because people talk about that quite frequently actually so basically inch bag is i'm never coming home bag. i don't know we really talk much we about haven't it. talked a whole lot about Probably it just because most of the time i think it's kind of ridiculous um it is and i've seen some of the pictures yeah it's it's, it's, like, it's a huge bag it. it has basically everything in it that you can go live off the land for infinity <laughs> right i mean and yeah. so if it seems a little ridiculous it's but like it's, in games when the little guy that walks over and then just boop, yeah pops out of town center <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so um that's what an inch bag is and we're not going to talk about it too much other than to mention if that's part of your plan where you think you just have to go and leave forever and you don't really have... If you're all for the lone wolf plan, yeah. that's probably what you want to do. You're going to want to get one. So uh, a bug out bag. We've talked about it many times. Let's talk about the things that should go in it very quickly. Uh, you need water. Water is going to be a huge thing. You need actual physical water. You need a water filter of some kind. And like we said, we always suggest a Sawyer Mini of some sort. 
And again, you can go actually get a 20% discount with our code CPREP19 if you go to SawyerSafeTravel.com. So that's something. Uh, and then you need some sort of water purification methods. So maybe a way to boil water, maybe some tabs to, to chemically treat water. Those things is a good idea to have. Then you got to have some food. And that's, you know, you can do anything with food. You can do freeze-dried meals. You can eat it. You, you can eat it. You can not eat it. There's a lot you can of different feed animals with yeah. it. But jerky, you know, and um, energy bars. I would just eat jerky all snacks. day. That's what I would do too. So those things are good to have. You need to have a weapon of some sort, and this is something we've already talked about, but you know, a handgun, survival rifle, you know, take down, take down bow, pepper spray, crossbow, any of those things, some sort of self-defense that you can actually um, also, you know, help you hunt or something. Because pepper spray is probably not gonna help you hunt anything, I wouldn't think. <laughs> Squirrel comes up to you, pepper Got spray. It. It's going to taste good already. Eating it's already, that tonight. already seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a, a knife is good. You got to have a knife of some sort, survival knife. Uh, fire starters. Yeah. Have several. Have three ways to start a fire in your bug out pack. Have the cheater ones. Have the big lighters. Extreme tough man mm-hmm. ones. Exactly. Get them all. Multi tools, lights. You know, headlamp, cookware. Something to eat with, a spork of some sort. Uh, seal cock key is always nice to have in your bug out bag. Gloves. Gloves. That's, yeah, really good. I ate taco time with gloves one you time. Did, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had like some nitrile gloves that you had to eat with. <laughs> yep. um, clothing, you know, and that's obviously seasonal dependent. You know, if you're in the cold, then you're going to want a beanie, gloves, scarf, jacket, all those types of things. Um, a lot of people like to put extra footwear in there, and that all just. It depends on what you want to do, but I just feel a lot like of space. extra boots are going to be heavy and, you know, yeah, it's going to be tough. So Just wear hospital booties. Put them in there. Yeah. Then you can just pull them over your shoe. Yeah. So that's kind of a bug out bag. I know that's really, really fast, but that's kind of an introduction to it. And if you want to learn it's more, just, It's such back. a common topic, and we've yeah. talked about it a bunch. If you don't know anything about a bug out bag, then good Go luck. back to those old episodes. Yeah. Yeah. So just real quick, some special considerations, like different things outside of, you know, the, the real basic plan. Mm-hmm. We talked one episode about cash, a cash. C-A-C-H-E. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and why they're important, especially in your bug out plan. Oh, yeah. So whatever path you choose in life, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're going to run into um, running out of supplies in some way or another, or you're in a scenario where you, where you got away from people. I don't know. Yeah. But you, it's like you know where these have been stored, only you, and, and they have these supplies to help you. Mm-hmm. Like you have one that has some items that you put in there extra ammo, another weapon, a handgun, uh, fuel. Maybe you're bearing five gallons of fuel somewhere along your path that you know you're going to take with the yeah. bug-out vehicle that, just in case. Um, burns real well, too. It really you does. Start a fire. Start a fire. Uh, extra food. You could have those that, MREs that store 25 years. Just bury it down in one yeah. of those. It's not going to hurt. No. It's going to taste delicious. When you're hungry. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, filtrations, things like that that you're just, if you, you can't pack with you, you don't have on your vehicle, and you know that they're, they're going to be needed at some point, and you know where they're at, and nobody can see them. Yeah. That's basically it. Um, so those are a good idea, especially in a bug out scenario. Um, fitness, obviously. Uh, the less fit you are, the shorter distance you're going to be able to make it mm-hmm. effectively. You're going to be easier to catch. You're going to be easier to be seen. Yep. And you may be at that point relying on meds. So the healthier, you know, we talk about this quite a bit. And it's a hard thing. I I have the hardest time. I've been trying all these different plans to try and get back into working out more. I've been too, man. And it's just hard to get a routine. But it'll be super important in this because you're packing a freaking huge bag. Yeah. And try it one day it sucks yeah try it in a situation where you're like in the mountains too or yeah. something like that it, it becomes even harder you yeah. know and, and obviously you hope that when you bug out you're not in a situation that you're just walking hopefully yeah. you have a vehicle exactly for, for most of it but you don't know you don't know what's going to yeah. happen so you have to be ready and you have to be fit and, and the you old have to be trusty healthy. legs yeah, you know, nope. they don't require gasoline or no they draw no flat and water. tire so um, being fit is going to get you much further in mm-hmm. so many different ways. Uh, if you have animals, pets, food obviously can come from them too. Yeah, they can. If you're in, yeah. a, in a horrible situation where you need to eat them. Just don't um, tell your kids you're eating your cat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dumbest chicken nuggets. So some pets you probably really don't want to take with you. No. Um, but a dog can be a good thing for getting you food. Yeah. can be protection. 
um, guidance, you know, yeah. maybe you've walked that path with it. Yeah. That animal is going to be perfect. Um, but they're there's great. also some cons. They're, great they're noisy. Al- they're noisy, but again, the noisy can be good too because they're great alarms. Exactly. They, they usually will sense someone's coming or coming around quicker and easier than you will. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like so, my dog barks like 10 seconds before I hear somebody come up the door. Yeah, it's pretty like, What the hell? Like, how do you do that? It's usually me. Yeah, it's usually you. Yeah. Always. <laughs> I don't know why your dog hates me. Yeah. Um, I got a few good reasons, but I'm not going to talk about it right now. <laughs> well, I plan to eat him first thing in a <laughs> scenario. You won't last. You won't last. It's like one little lunch, maybe, off of him. <laughs> yeah, seriously. He's tiny. <laughs> it's all this fur. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so an animal can be very useful for mm-hmm. you, you know, it, and like we were mentioning, a horse, I mean, that's another great animal to oh, have. Oh, yeah. Um, so the other thing is to consider is those communities that you're in. Yeah. Maybe you want them to get back on their feet and, you, and you're and you not a butthole and just want to and get out. And, you know, you want to be able to reestablish your community. And sometimes people bug out and don't come back. And that makes the cog, mm-hmm. you know, they remove that from the system. Like in Hurricane Katrina, they, they finally got everything back and they were trying to get the pumps going to get the water out over the levee and everything. And, and the technicians were gone. There <laughs> nobody. Everybody had bugged out. Yeah. So you do have to just think about that. It's like, what role do you play in your community if you're a police officer or a mm-hmm. firefighter, a uh, doctor? Medical or, personnel. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you, you got to think, are, can you still do good? And yeah. when the systems are back online, how much are you delaying it? You know? And it's yeah, not, it's, there's no problem with being selfish in this if you want to yeah. be uh, safe, but you got to think there's other people that you care about in that town and you might mm-hmm. be an important part. You never thought you were. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah, that's a really good idea. A few other quick tips for uh, bugging out. And some of these are just random stuff. We're going to talk about them. Uh, if you're bugging out and, and you're actually like sleeping out, you know, under the stars or, you know, out in the woods or whatever it might be. It's a good idea to sleep in a different location that you're actually putting your fire in your cooking because obviously that cooking puts off a scent. Somebody hasn't been eaten. They smell your bacon. Mm, they're coming, right? So if you can at least, you know, sleep somewhere else, you're going to have less problems with that in the middle of the night, right? Have so. you seen those old-fashioned westerns and they sleep up in the tree? Yep. Yeah, but absolutely. Good idea. Yeah. Uh, practice your bug out plan. Like you can have a plan all you want, but you need to practice this at, at least like once a year or something so that you've done it. Yeah. So that you know um, that you and your family. What obstacles could you run into? Yeah. What are you going to run into? You're going to be able to iron out those details, you know, every time you practice. So I think it's probably a really good idea. Things are going to go a lot smoother. Uh, again, something we talk about a lot keep your gas tank over half always. It's one of those yeah. things that if, if you get to a bug out situation and you don't have to stop at, you know, the gas station, you're so much better off. You're way better off. Yeah. Uh, physical maps, again, those are great. Um, communications, we didn't talk about this too much because I think, but yeah. it, it needs to be part of your plan somehow because it's such a hard thing. Like it, your bug out plan needs to be how do we contact each other the moment that this SHTF situation happens, right? Like if I'm at work, my kids are at school, my wife is at home. How do we all contact each other if the cell towers are down? You know, yeah. um, what is our plan of doing that? And there are some things that you can do. Obviously, you can have a CB, you can have ham radios, you can have two-way radios, you can have things like Gotenna. But again, those are all kind of hard to figure out sometimes, especially between three different types of people, right? Yeah. Um, Did mo- we just recently get? Were they from BattleBox? The walkie the, talkies. The two ways. Got? Yeah. And we just Kobe and I picked the channel and yep. we said, you yeah. Know, so I know. If for some reason I can't get a hold of him, yep. I'm giving up and I'm gonna leave. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even no, but care. we have tested it actually. Like from his house to my house, from inside our houses, yeah. we can get to each other on a two-way radio. So if I can't, yeah, I'll. I'll, I'll I'm, uh, that's the, another way of communication mm-hmm. that we're gonna try. Absolutely. Also, um, uh, uh, thinking about you know the first thing you're gonna try with communication is a cell phone. It's always the first thing, right? And so um, a text is gonna go through easier in any situation than a call will you having problems over there oh did you so if if you're having problems getting a call through because the network is overloaded shoot a text because it's going to get through much easier so that might be something that you talk about as part of your bug out plan we're going to send a text and we all know to put the plan plan into place right if we can and the last thing is just again be flexible you need to be flexible on all of these things it can't be a rigid plan there has to be a b c d and it is, and you know alternates for each of those throughout that plan so right on um, 
man, that's a lot. I know yeah. that's we kind of we blew spit through a lot out of, a bunch of stuff. But I think it's good to keep just thinking about every aspect of that bug out, right? Yeah, yeah. So right on. Hey, real quick mm-hmm. uh, before we get into a uh, quick review, mm-hmm. have you heard about survival boxes? Yeah, you should get them. I think I have. They are the only subscription box packed with all the essential survival supplies that you need to prep for surviving disasters, emergencies, or your next outdoor adventure. There are many different boxes to choose from, so you can order the survival food, water, gear required for your survival plan. Sign up today and get survival boxes delivered to your doorstep every month. No contracts, cancel any time. Use promo code CASUALPREPPERS for 10% off your first box on any subscription or store order at survivalboxes.com. That's fantastic. And actually, I posted something on Instagram the other day about the little survival cards they send. Yeah. You know, and then they have the, the book and everything that you can put them right in. Everybody's like, oh, crap, how do I buy those? I want those. And you can actually pretty, I'm pretty sure you can go onto their store and just buy those yeah. separately. They're so nice. They're really this cool. Like super consolidated information. Yeah. And it's all like detailed of which mm-hmm. topic. It's great. Yeah, so you can go check those out. And I appreciate you get them for free in their box. Exactly. Yeah. So go ahead and do that. Kind of free. Uh, do you want to look at that tack pack then, Cameron? Right here. Cool. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look. So tack pack. Uh, the first item that came in into it. It's a cool shirt. Was the uh, yeah the tack pack long sleeve shirt thirty dollar value. How do you like that? It's long sleeve. Yeah, it's long sleeve. Fantastic. You cut the sleeves off. You want a short sleeve? Yeah. Then you have just some sleeves if you need them. <laughs> Uh, the first thing is an Armaspec Rhino Magwell grip and funnel. Holy moly. Wait. So it, it's designed to significantly improve magazine reload oh, yeah, speed this. and firearm handling. Yeah, Ooh. so I watched the video on how oh, you this did? looks when they put it on. It's awesome. Is it yeah, cool? it yeah. looks way cool. It looks, a, it's like really sleek, and uh, then it just kind of guides that magazine. In there that's kind of cool. Yeah, so it that's a really cool. $22 value. Like that. That's kind of cool. And then the Armaspec Oops Kit. That's something everyone needs but never drops in a cart while shopping. Oops. So it's basically... Uh, a bunch of pins and springs. Yeah, it's just a bunch... Like, parts. If you're taking apart your gun and you, and you lose something, this, yeah. this has some extras for you. So that's a $15 value. Yeah. And, and the Attack awesome. Fire Roll Pin Starter Punch Set. Uh, they said this was highly requested, so it's essential for every builder, owner, and armorer. Just punch out your pins. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, nice. And then the last thing, rat's tourniquet. Hey, hey, hey. Add to your medical supply. Are you bleeding out? Uh, you need a tourniquet. So that's a $17 value. Oops, tourniquet. Yep. So thank you, Tack Did you Pack. this light? This that must have been from thing? the other one. Yeah, I think it was. So um, there that's you go. it. Yeah. Oh, it's um, time for the quick and dirty medical tip. So uh, real <laughs> quick on this one, um, this season, there's been kind of a, a unique virus that's caused one of the most delightful things in medicine. Oh, really? One of my favorite visits. What's that? The cough. Oh. Coffee, cough, <laughs> cough. If you haven't noticed, everybody around you in every town and every store is coughing, mm-hmm. and it's super irritating. And, and they cough like this. <coughs> yeah. In your face <coughs> without without <coughs> covering <coughs> anything. While they're getting boxes yeah. of cereal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's why it's so widespread. So number one, I guess I should say, cover your mouth. Dummies. So it's hard to find a good cough medicine because if you've been there, you've tried everything over the counter. Nothing works, Nothing man. works. And truthfully, nothing really does work. Yeah. Um, that inflammation is impossible to get rid of. And a lot of people think it's infection, but... Like ninety percent of the time, it's just inflammation. Is it? And you've got tightness. You've got dis. You know, you've got mucus accumulation because of the inflammation in your lungs. Um, so I just wanted to mention some things that actually can help your cough that you could buy today. Oh, nice. Store in your kit. Number one is honey, and honey has gone through uh, studies showing that it was superior in children to be. Um, it was superior to to suppress the cough over. Any cough syrups prescribed? I believe or it, over man. The counter. Yeah, I believe it. So honey's got infl- inflam- anti-inflammatory properties. It's soothing, tastes delicious. It's good for you. It's great. Kids love it. Yeah, yeah. It's that's one of the best food items that you can store, and it stores forever. Well, and yeah. it's really expensive. So that's it's nice. super expensive. That's yeah. great. So raise some bees. Yeah. Um, probiotics actually have shown to you know increase the good flora. To oh. help fight bacteria that makes sense, and to yeah. kind of help reduce inflammation and things mm-hmm. like that. So get you some probiotics. Um, bromel- bromelain. Mm. I, this is, I even looked up this ingredient, but it's actually found in pineapples and pineapple juice. 
It actually suppresses cough and helps break up uh, mucus. Hmm. And pineapples are also good at helping the enzymes in digestion. So get you some pineapples. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe move to Hawaii. Yeah. Peppermint is also a good, um, has a lot of healing properties. It helps with kind of opening the nasal passages Mm -hmm. just because of that. uh, And it tastes good. And it tastes delicious and it helps stinky breath. Mm -hmm. So peppermint can help cough too. Marshmallow also has, it can treat sore throats. It has, um, I'm not going to say it very good. Althea officinalis. Mm, Perennial that blooms in the summer. It's a um, part of a flower or whatever. Anyway, it's in a lot of marshmallows, and it can help coat the throat, helps with sore throats, helps with coughing. Hmm. And then your old thyme or thyme, Mm -hmm. whatever you want to say, that actually uh, has flavonoids in it, and that helps Mm. break up mucus. I love flavonoids. (laughs) I know. Mm. If you've ever had a good flavonoid, mm. you right love it. Right before bed, I like to give me some flavonoids. Yep. Mm. <laughs> but you can, uh, a cup of tea yeah. um, with that in it, or you can look specifically for flavonoids. Okay. Those help with inflammation. Those help with cough, break up mucus. So those are some things you can just stock up on that are more natural that honestly are probably as good as anything over the counter. It's true, man. It's just like guaifenesin and um, all that What's crap. the really strong stuff that people get sometimes? Mucinex? No, the the cough medicine, the syrup that you can like get prescribed. Oh, it has coating. Coating, yeah. So it's exactly the same as Mucinex Is or it? one of those. Yeah, oh, okay. it's just it's got a cough suppressant or expectorant in it, uh. both of which I think barely work. Yeah, but the coating suppresses cough. So okay. So get you a bunch of coding. I like that. So anyway. Thank you, Cameron. You uh, bet. And thank you guys for listening to the podcast. We appreciate you. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit subscribe. Please do. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, Look we, at our videos. Look at our other videos. Yeah. Come see us on. If you really want to get involved, come see us on Facebook and Instagram You know, and YouTube. Those are the best places to get in touch with us. On Instagram, we're going live all the time, so you can talk directly to yeah. us. Um, and so and that's kind of fun. If something you're dying to hear us mm-hmm. talk about, tell Let us. Let us know. Let us know. Let us know. We're here. We are. We are here to listen. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next time.